And uh, today, uh, the learning objectives of this session will be to explain what is Ramadan intermittent fasting, to list some of the challenges related to uh, research in uh, fasting in Ramadan, also describe uh, the different ways Aspetar uh, promoted science, so the dissemination of science through uh, Aspetar marketing department, and at the end summarize how we developed the uh, uh, Ramadan clinical guidelines of Aspetar. So, the plan of the presentation will be a bit different than the uh, objectives. With Again, we start with the definition on uh, Ramadan, and then we will focus directly on uh, some videos uh, very nicely prepared by the marketing department on how Asbetar uh, promoted the science of uh, Ramadan and exercise. And then we will have an overview on the uh, history of research in uh, Ramadan fasting uh, and exercise, but with a special focus on the contribution of uh, our institution, Aspetar. And finally, as you said, Dr. Paul, we will uh, be de um, describing how did we developed the last year, during the two past years, the uh, clinical guidelines on uh, exercising during Ramadan for healthy individuals and athletes. So, first of all, definition of uh, Ramadan. So, during the last two days, we sent out a survey just to uh, to help me illustrate uh, these slides, and uh, I have uh, two good news. The first good news is that uh, to the question, um, is Ramadan based on the moon site? Everybody, 66 of the surveyed people, so it was a non-mandatory survey, and the 66 people said that Ramadan is based on, based on moon site. The other good news is that apart from this question, everybody had at least one error some, somewhere in one question. So, one of the questions. So the good news is that today, if you listen to me carefully, I will give all the information to help you make sure that next time you do the survey, you have everything uh, right. So uh, Ramadan is about fasting from sunrise to sunset. This is what 83% uh, of the 66 people uh, replied. Well, while it is wrong, because Ramadan is not fasting from, from sunrise, but it is from dawn. Dawn is the end of the night, where, when the light starts to come up, and it's, it happens, it occurs way beyond sunrise. Let's say broadly between uh, 40 minutes and one hour, one, and, and two hours, depending on latitude and the uh, time of the year. So on this, Ramadan is about fasting for one month, and when we say month, one month, it's not exactly 30 days, it could be 29 or 30 days, because again, it's uh, based on the lunar cycle. So. Uh, here, 29% uh, of the people said that it was uh, fasting about 30 days exactly, which is also wrong. So here you can see the, 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 the yearly cycle of Ramadan. So last year in 2021, it started around the, the 13th of uh, April. This year it will start the 1st or the 2nd of, uh, of April, in a few days, inshallah, in 2022, depending on the moon site again. And then we will, we will go progressively uh, towards the shortest daylight fasting, which will happen on the 14th of December 2032. And then again, the daylight will lengthen progressively until uh, reaching its peak on the 23rd of June 2047. So, uh, Dr. Paul, if you follow me this way, after a 33 years cycle, next Tuesday lecture of <laughs> about Ramadan and uh, and physical exercise could be could occur on um, uh, early April 2055. So the good news is that inshallah you will all be uh, fully healthy in this meeting of uh, 2055. And uh, if I'm not on time, it will be that uh, perhaps I'm stuck in the traffic, or that I will be fasting for good in my grave. <laughs> as as of my uh, age now, we don't know. Inshallah, we'll be all together in 2055. So. Uh, let's have a look at the timing of uh, fasting. So most of you kn knew that it's not uh, the same timing for, for everybody in the world. So in my uh, examples here, I will focus on the Northern Hemisphere. Why the Northern, Northern Hemisphere? Because first of all, most of the global population is uh, located here. And uh, most of the major, uh, Muslim majority countries are located in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so we have here the equator. Here in the Middle East, in Doha, we live not far from the equator, so this, we, this year we will be fasting 14 to 15 hours. With an amplitude of 44 minutes this year, 
2022, the, the last day of fasting will be 44 minutes longer the first day of fasting. If you are uh, fasting in the middle of Europe, uh, you will be fasting 16 to 17 hours, so a bit more. And here, the amplitude is longer. The amplitude will be of 2 hours and 40 minutes. So in Manchester, for example, this year, in the middle of England, they will uh, fast 2 hours and 40 minutes more the, the, during the last day of Ramadan compared with the first day. Let alone if you fast in the northern parts of, uh, part of Europe, uh, northern Russia, northern uh, Scandinavia, you will be fasting for 20 or 21 hours. So you already figure out that there's not one Ramadan, there are many di diverse Ramadan depending on where you are and the time of the year. So if you think about the effect of this fasting, these different ways of fasting, the eventual interference of the environment, hot, humid or cold, and the effort you are doing, there will be a lot of uh, different effects of Ramadan on, uh, on physical performance with from no effect at all to a profound effect if it's after a very long uh, day of fasting, if you do a long effort and if you do it in the heat and in a very humid environment. So now let's, after having defined broadly Ramadan, uh, let's pass to the uh, marketing uh, and the way uh, Aspetar communicated science to the public. And here I would like to uh, thank the marketing department that helped me a lot in preparing these slides. You will see in the next few slides very nice videos prepared by the marketing, but also in the design of my slides. And uh, in 2011, so one of the questions was when did marketing start uh, its uh, campaign? It was 2011 and only 25% of you got it right. Even me, uh, I don't remember uh, when, it, when it started. I would have said 2013, 2014, but not 2011. In 2011, it started by SMS, etc. And the marketing used TV interviews, media articles, online streaming, and social media campaigns. So very uh, modern ways of, uh, uh, of communicating. So now I'm going to go through a series of uh, five uh, videos. The first one will be an overview on the 11 years of campaign of uh, Aspetal on exercise during Ramadan.
uh, first video, it was relatively long because it was about 11 years of campaign where uh, Aspeta have, have tried to reach the community people, the amateur athletes and the elite athletes using not only uh, staffs from Aspeta but also the sports celebrities. Next video is about nutrition and hydration. أولاً وبصورة عامة لا ينصح لمريض السكر بالصوم أبدأ بتناول الماء والتمر أو ممكن بدل الماء نتناول اللبن شرب الماء والسوال مهم في رمضان لكي يحافظ الجسم على المستوى اللازم في رمضان لا تتناول كميات كبيرة من الطعام في وقت قصير هو المهم جداً خلال شهر رمضان لكي يحافظ الجسم على مستوى معين من and we have seen here the importance of uh, hydration so not only proper nutrition but also uh, a big focus on hydration because dehydration is a problem uh, linked to Ramadan when people do not know how to rearrange, rearrange themselves during dark uh, hours now uh, uh, it will be um, a presentation on psychology and sleep well, wellness and sleep اتبع مواعيد محدده للنوم والاستيقاظ وتجنب مشروبات التلفزيون بالمنبهات كالكافيين والنيكوتين ومشروبات الطاقه لا تستخدم الاجهزه الالكترونيه عند النوم اتبع على طلبات النوم في شهر رمضان المبارك عليك اتباع مواعيد محدده للنوم <تصفيق> التوجيهات التاليه حسن راحتك النفسيه من خلال العبادات seen here uh, a video on the importance of uh, psychology, man mental well-being, but also the importance of sleep. We know that during Ramadan, sleep is completely changed, the sleep pattern is completely changed, and it could have a negative effect. You will see that this in a minute. Now, next, uh, the second last video is about Dr. Mohammed al and his colleagues from the dental department about uh, oral health and uh, dental uh, hygiene. Yes, and now last video will be on uh, physical activity, and then I will uh, touch base on this video later on when we present the results of one study from hospital. يجب أن تكون هذه الحصص طويلة وذو شدة. was an overview of, of the uh, marketing uh, sorry marketing campaigns of Aspeta to try to uh, contribute to the science dissemination to the community to the amateur athletes and also elite athletes. So after the marketing uh, of Aspeta, I'm gonna present some history about uh, research and here. I would like to uh, highlight two literature reviews written by our colleague Anis Shawashi and our colleague Inigo Mujica that were published in 2009 and 2010. To tell you that uh, a decade ago, there was no much on Ramadan and, um, and sport. And Aspeta has been a leader because in 2011, Aspeta has co-organized with the FIFA uh, a very important symposium about football and Ramadan. And you can see here a panel of experts of which uh, the leaders of the, uh, of the conference were Dr. Hakim Shalabi, Dr. Jiri Dvorak, Dr. Yassin Zirgini from the uh, Center of Medical Excellence of Algiers, and uh, Professor Rodbar, who is one of the leaders in uh, nutrition in sport. And this uh, consensus has led to a special issue of the Sp uh, Journal of Sports Sciences with uh, more than a dozen of uh, very interesting articles that are very relevant in, uh, in the field. And not only it was a scientific uh, conference, a meeting between experts, but also we had had the chance of having elite athletes coming and giving their testimony on their way of better coping with Ramadan 
training and competitions. So one of the other questions of the survey was how many uh, papers on Ramadan ha are associated with the name of Asmita? And 30% uh, of you got it right because when you search on PubMed about Ramadan and Asmita, you'll find 26 papers. And if you extend it a bit larger, uh, Ramadan and fasting, you have 37 papers. So we, we, don't, we, we cannot say that, Rama, uh, that Asmita is a, a center dedicated to fasting, but it had a, a substantial uh, contribution, let's say. Now, uh, the, uh, one of the pillars, the pillar papers on sleep uh, in athletes have been uh, published by uh, our colleague, uh, former colleague Christopher Herrera, uh, showing reduced sleep, uh, reduced, reduced sleep, reduced total sleep in uh, elite football players in Qatar. But this was uh, based on the uh, questionnaires. So we have complemented this uh, study by, by this study, the study on elite cyclists in Qatar using portable polysomnography devices. And we have seen here that during the first and the fourth week, fourth week of Ramadan, there was a disturbance in uh, sleep pattern with more light sleep and a progressive decrease in uh, deep sleep and REM sleep, REM sleep being rapid eye movement sleep, and these were significantly decreased two weeks, even two weeks after Ramadan. So we can see that uh, Ramadan is associated with issues at the level of the sleep, but at the level of methodology here, we, don't have a, we didn't have a control group because finding a control group of non-fasters in uh, Muslim majority countries in, is an issue. So what do we do? We just use the control conditions as the pre-Ramadan. Sometimes pre-Ramadan and post-Ramadan, but in this case, post-Ramadan is uh, impacted. So here the control was only pre-Ramadan and each subject was his own or her own uh, control. The next study by Cristiano Eirali and colleagues on the uh, injuries in the QSL over three consecutive uh, years, here had not only out of Ramadan conditions to compare, but also a gr groups of Muslims and non-Muslims. And here, the uh, results show, show that overall, there was no difference of injury during Ramadan compared to out of Ramadan. But if there was a, an increase in injuries, it happened in the non-Muslim players. And 33% of you got it right. The non-Muslim players had more injuries during Ramadan. We can understand it because Muslims are not only fasting, but are also having all these activities, religious activities, social activities during the night, and they are used to go to bed at 3 or 4 a.m., which is not the case for uh, non-Muslim players, especially if they just came in the country and are, they are not used at all of, about training and playing during Ramadan, more uh, broadly living during the night and resting uh, during the day. So next uh, study is a study from uh, 2016, about the Olympic Games of uh, 2012. So Abdul Raziz Farouk, our colleague, uh, did the survey and we published these results. And these results show that in 54 elite football players that were about to play the Olympic Games in football, uh, the, uh, I will not enter into the details, details but they had uh, a negative attitude about their performance while fasting. So this is without having objective data, already they had a negative attitude, which is very, very important to take into consideration. And we, we show not only um, improve our knowledge, us sports scientists, coaches, clinicians around the athletes, but also once we have the right knowledge communicated to the uh, players. But because it makes no sense that if there is no negative effect of Ramadan, we leave this, this wrong, uh, it's not the knowledge, it's the wrong, uh, how do we say it? I don't find it in English. Anyway, you understood me. The athlete has a wrong idea, has a negative idea about the fact, but it's wrong. This is uh, even worse. Now, uh, this is about uh, fasting three consecutive days, because uh, in Islam there is the compulsory month of Ramadan for fasting, and there is the Sunnah, where it is encouraged for every uh, adult healthy Muslim to be fasting two days a week for the whole year, and three consecutive days during uh, 
in the middle of the lunar month, no, during the the white nights, Layalibi, during the, the full moon. So if uh, if a Muslim will uh, follow all these advices to, to fast, he will be fasting 120 days a year. So one day out of three uh, over, over, or over uh, the, uh, the year. Here, this is uh, a study about repeated sprint in fasted state. And uh, we have observed uh, a negative effect of three days of fasting. So it's, this is the Ramadan way of fasting without uh, drinking nor no eating. After the second set. So this, uh, this effort was five very intensive sprints of five seconds, 25 seconds in between, three minutes of recovery, and then a second set. So if the title, the title is quite misleading because we say three days intermittent fasting, repeated sprint performance decreed by vertical stiffness impairment. But uh, if you read this title, you will think that there is always a negative effect, which, which is not the case. We only observe a decrease in power at the sixth sprint and the decrease in vertical stif stiffness at the sixth and seventh sprint. So, uh, we have tried also to assess something else, which is the cognitive, cognitive uh, some aspects of the cognitive uh, function of the athletes, and here it was the uh, reaction time. So, as you can see here, the athletes were, these are adults, active, uh, healthy individuals, fasting. They were sprinting here, and in between the uh, two sets, they had three minutes, and in these three minutes, they removed their harness, just stepped one step aside, did the uh, cognitive test that lasted one minute 15 to one minute 20 seconds, came back, put on their harness again, and started the second set. And they did also after the, the test. And the bad news here is that only three days of intermittent fasting, and fasting was about 16 hours, it was here in Doha, so not very far from the equator, uh, the uh, three days of intermittent fasting had a negative effect on simple choice and also multiple choice reaction times. And I would like to attract your attention on the methodological uh, point regarding uh, testing why the athletes are really tired. It's different than taking them after a training session or squarely in a rested uh, state and test, test their cognitive uh, function while they are fasted, but rested. And after that, we thought about eventually using mouth rinsing to, uh, to damper the effect, to eventually damper the effect of uh, fasting on, uh, perf on sprint performance and also on uh, reaction time. And we used very intensive uh, mouth rinsing procedures. So the participants uh, in, a, in a separate experiment were intensively mouth rinsing the mouth with 10 milliliters of uh, water with uh, placebo or water with uh, carbohydrate. There was also a control condition where they did not uh, mouth the, uh, rinse their mouth. Here, in this case, if in the previous experiment, the experimenter were, were, uh, was, was blinded and the participant was not blinded because when you are fasted, or fed, you know it as participant. So in the previous uh, experiment, the only the experimenter encouraging the participant was blind. Here, he could not be blinded to the fasted condition. He could only be blinded to the placebo and uh, carbohydrate uh, condition. These are uh, some methodological issues that we have to take into consideration when we uh, do research in this uh, field. And here, we have to note very importantly that three out of 15 participants rose their hand, they said, I have inadvertently swallowed some water, some uh, liquid. And this represented 1% of the total mouth rinsing procedures. So if you are very exhausted, mouth rinsing very intensively, you have a very low uh, risk of inadvertently swallowing uh, liquid, but the risk is there. It's possible that you inadvertently swallow liquid. In addition to the fact that we have weighed very precisely the 10 milliliters of liquid they used to mouth rinse, and also we have weighed it when they uh, expectorated the back in, in, in a special glass, and each time there was a very small quantity remaining in the mouth. We don't know if this very small uh, quantity remaining in their mouth, if it was swallowed with their saliva and or 
evaporated while they were, they were hyperventilated, hyperventilating, we don't know. But all these considerations should be taken into account uh, for religious uh, reasons. So here you said 42% got it right that uh, repeated speech exercise in daylight fasting, there was no effect of mount rinsing on the reaction time. So now this uh, very recent 2021 uh, paper using the step into health uh, pedometers over seven years. So for seven years, uh, 207 participants had their pedometers analyzed one month before Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, and one month after Ramadan. And here we can see that, first of all, the preferred time of exercising was clearly in the morning for the non-fasters compared to the fasters. And during the month of Ramadan, they, while they were uh, similar before Ramadan, the yellow ones, which are the non-fasters, clearly increased their physical activity during Ramadan, while the fasters decreased, decreased significantly their activity during Ramadan. And here, let me... Here you had 75% of false responses because you thought that during Ramadan the physical activity did not was maintained, which is uh, wrong, as you see here, it decreased in the fasters. And, and finally, we have published this uh, letter to the editor about the uh, fasting exercising during the pandemic. We have published the, this last year. The pandemic is uh, no more, thank, thanks God, no more this, uh, in the same uh, condition. The virus is still around. We still have to take the precautionary measures. But this paper, without having original, original data, but based on the literature review, uh, clearly encouraged the healthy people to exercise during Ramadan during the, the pandemic, wearing masks if they are in groups, because this could support the immune system. But I have checked this online uh, very recently. If ever you have uh, diabetes or other pathologies, there are uh, health issues relate, uh, related to fasting when you are sick and in the pandemic. So you should have uh, uh, you should consult the, uh, your physician if ever you are sick and w wanting to exercise during Ramadan while you are fasting. The last, if I remember well, the last slide about uh, the scientific papers is this uh, Ramadan and football review that we have just published in 2022 with the uh, two colleagues, uh, Matthew Delang and Paul Salam from uh, USA, Hamdi Stur and Helmi Mitsad from uh, Tunisia, and uh, myself representing Aspetar in Qatar, about the effects of Ramadan intermittent fasting on football players and implications for domestic football leagues over the next decade. Why? Because Ramadan now will enter into the leagues of football and for, let's say, for the 2025 20, next years, uh, the football leagues in the Northern hem Hemisphere will be played with Ramadan interfering. interfering. So we have uh, published this uh, paper based on a uh, very uh, accurate uh, assessment of the papers, the quality of the papers, etc. So we are very proud to have this paper and I will uh, send it to you with pleasure if, you, uh, if ever you need to read it. Let's come to the last part of the uh, presentation today, it's about the ASPETA clinical guidelines and uh, if you go on, uh, if you log on www.aspeta.com, you will be able to log in the education section of the uh, website and here you will find a, cer a certain number of uh, guidelines, clinical guidelines. And here, uh, by clicking on this, you can download the 21 pages uh, document which has been uh, developed by a team that I will uh, mention uh, in the next slide. And contrary to all the previous papers that I just showed you, that you are usually hidden behind uh, journal paywalls, this is a completely free uh, document. You just need a connection, connect on the uh, Aspeta web website, and you can download it, and you can read it. And if you read it, you will find a very interesting um, uh, information. Why? Because this team of uh, colleagues, so from Aspeta we have uh, three doctors with me, Dr. Zmoumen Tajdin, Dr. Omar Al-Sraifi and Dr. Karim Faledi, and we have these eminent uh, guests, uh, Dr. Abdul Rashid Aziz representing Singapore, uh, Nicola Bragazzi from Italy working actually in Canada, 
and you have uh, three Tunisians, Anis Shawashi from Tunis, Hamdi Shuru from Sfax, and uh, Dr. Helmi Ibn Saad from Sous. All these are very well published in the uh, field of Ramadan and exercise. And these, these uh, colleagues have uh, extensively worked and exchanged it, and it's pretty much developing the clinical guidelines was pretty much like writing literature review. And by the way, we will uh, uh, soon uh, submit our uh, paper coming out from the uh, clinical guidelines as scientific papers, not only in English, but also in Arabic, because the version that I just showed you in the previous slide is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, is the English version. And we are, we are actively, uh, very intensively working on the uh, Arabic translation, which is very well advanced and actually uh, out of, uh, of this group with uh, external Arabic uh, experts. And very soon we will submit it to uh, Dr. Paul and the medical education uh, department for finalization. So in the clinical guidelines, I will uh, go relatively uh, quickly now. We uh, say that the athletes should decide about their, uh, way, their decision to fast or not to fast, how to deal with Ramadan. And as uh, clinical support and coaches, we are here to support them. But at the end, it's the athlete that will take uh, their responsibility. So please never try to interfere with an athlete deciding to fast instead of saying you should not something that some people do, you should say, you, want, you will fast, I will support you the best I can with all the knowledge I have because I am, I am an hospital uh, staff and I have uh, all the uh, literature uh, at, the reach, uh, at my reach, so I, I, I know I can help. We uh, have the uh, section about the training session time of day where we recommend to train before iftar or after iftar. Concerning the morning session, uh, training session. There's no problem at all uh, training in the morning early, but the problem is, is uh, not with the performance or with your training. The problem is, is with uh, the recovery post session. If the if after the training session you need 12 hours before drinking and eating, then your recovery will be uh, impaired. This is uh, not advisable. Uh, we also speak about frequency of training, intensity, duration, type of exercise training and the training environment. So many, many uh, details there in these uh, guidelines. Nutrition and sleep, we speak about sleep, very important. We speak about nutrition and hydration. Of course, uh, passing by mouth rinsing and body cooling. But uh, concerning hydration, I would like also to, uh, to, to comment on a, a certain point. Many of the uh, literature articles have shown that if you are dehydrated of more than 2% of your body mass, your, your physical performance, broadly, will be decreased. But in, in all of the studies but one, the participants were not blinded to the fact if they were hydrated or dehydrated. So if I take you, Dr. Paul, and I tell you, okay, today you're going to do exercise, drink. Tomorrow you're going to come and you will do the same exercise, not drinking. So we'll not be uh, blinded. So uh, in these guidelines, so this is an, another invitation to read the guidelines. In these guidelines, we also report the very uh, study where the participants were blinded to the fact if they were hydrated or half hydrated. How did the researchers do? They just installed the tube, a uh, nasogastric tube, and just injected or did not inject water in, uh, in the stomach of the uh, participants. And then the participants were uh, blinded and you want to know the results of the uh, study. Okay, I will give you, just for you, 3% 3, 3 uh, decrease in uh, body, 3% uh, dehydration is in fact bad for physical performance. But in this case, the methodology was even better than the previous study. Last slide is about specific populations. We have, uh, a special section about the athletes who are competing in weight categories like judo or combat sport. And here, fasting during Ramadan, if you want to lose weight, is really problematic. So we wrote something on this also. Uh, we spoke about healthy population in the, in the community. And at the end of the guidelines, we say that for the unhealthy populations, uh, the guidelines are out of scope and that in any case, any people be, being having any illness should consult their um, their physician, their doctor before uh, fasting. So I thank you very much uh, for your attention. Ah, sorry, sorry, just 
the, the conclusion is that we have uh, defined Ramadan fasting, we have listed some of the challenges related to the research in the field, and uh, we have shown how Aspeta has, through the marketing department, uh, reached out to the community and to the athletes through different channels to try to contribute to uh, science dissemination. And at the end, we have touched base on how we develop the uh, Ramadan clinical guideline. I'm sorry I skipped the conclusion. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Thank you.